Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to go over some practice problems when it comes to tracing and debugging. But before we get into that, there are a few things I wanted to go over. First of all, I wanted to go over something called scope. So all variables have scope. And if you've ever heard of global variables or local variables, then that is just the variable scope that is being referred to. So if we have a function, So we have this function, which is called func. And so we have two variables here. We have variable one and variable two. The scope of variable one is global because it's outside of the function definition. The scope of variable two is local because it's inside the, the function definition. And what that means is that only the function can use variable two. So like variable two can only be called within the function. Variable one can be accessed outside of the function. And so for example, if we said variable one is equal to one, variable two is equal to two, and then outside of the function, we say variable two is equal to three. When we use variable two inside of the function, it's going to be equal to two. But if we use variable two outside of the function, then it's going to be equal to three. The value of the variable is now three instead of two. And then just a quick note, always remember that you need the def whenever you're writing your function and the def is a Python keyword. Okay, now let's start practicing some tracing. Write the outputs for the following lines of code. So we have our function definition. We have one parameter treat, which in this case is lemon, and it's a string. For ch and treat, so for char and treat, we're gonna start with lemon. And so I'm just going to write all of treat out so that it's easier to keep track of all of our characters. If ch is equal to capital L, print add a lollipop. And so we're looking at this letter right now, and L is equal to capital L. So in our output, we're going to print add a lollipop. And then L if, since this if statement was true, we can skip this L if statement. And now this if statement, since it's in a separate block, so this is one block, this is another block, we still have to look at this if statement. If ch is equal to e, which l is not equal to e, we would print all done, else print all done, almost. Now we're done with l. Moving on to the next character, is that character equal to capital L? No, l if is that character in a, e, i, o, u, continue. And so because we continue, we're going to skip the rest of this loop. We're going to skip the rest of that iteration and move on to the next iteration, which is now m. Is ch equal to l? So is m equal to l? No. Is ch in a, e, i, o, u? Is m in a, e, i, o, u? No. If ch is equal to e, print all done. e is not equal to m, else print almost. Is O equal to L? No. Is O in A, E, I, O, U? Yes. So we continue. Same thing as last time when we had the E, we skip the rest of the for loop and move on to the next iteration. Is N equal to capital L? No. Is N in A, E, I, O, U? No. Is N equal to E? No. And then because this was an if else, we print almost. And so this is our final output for this section of code. Oh, and keep in mind that there is no return statement here. However, we're not asked to print the value of the function, so it doesn't matter. That's why we're not printing none. However, if there was a print here, then we would print none. Okay, moving on to the next question. So here we have two functions. One is tickets and one is movie night. And so in tickets, basically, we're seeing how many people do we have and then calculating the price based on the number of people. 
And so that's 12 times the number of people. Every time we call this function, we're going to print that's expensive. And then at the end, we're going to return the price. And so now for our movie night, which is the function being called down here, we have genre, number of people, and then budget. If genre is equal to fantasy, which it is, we're going to print yay. And then since this if statement was true, we can skip the elif. If the budget is less than people or less than tickets people. And so now this function has been called. We're going to run this function and we're going to see we have seven people. So that's 12 times seven, which is 84. And then because this function was called, we're going to print that's expensive. And then is 84 less than 100? So this is basically asking. And that is not true. So we're not going to print popcorn. And then we have another if statement. If budget is less then we move on to the next if statement, since this is in a separate block. And so once again, we have 100 less than 84, which is not true, but we are calling this function again. So we're going to print that's expensive. And then because we never hit this return statement, when we print the value of the function is still none. Moving on to the next problem. Here we have a function called barista with a drink list, milk, and num. And so here our drink list is macchiato, matcha, flat white. Our milk is oat, and then our number is three. So we initialize our total and we initialize an index. For i in range three, so that would look like this if drink list index, so now we have index zero is equal to matcha. And so this is our index zero, which is macchiato. So that's not true. Move on to the elif statement, flat white, not true. Elif, London fog, not true. Else, total plus equals five. So we're just gonna add five. If milk not equal to whole, which oat is not equal to whole, total plus two. So now it's seven. And then we do our index plus one. And so then we move on to our next number in the range, our next iteration. And so now we have index one equal to matcha, which is true. So our total is plus equals eight. And then since this is all one if else block, we can just move on to the next if block. If milk not equal to whole, oat is not equal to whole, we're going to add two. That's going to be 17. And then our index plus one. Same thing, move on to the next iteration. So now we have our second iteration and index is now two. So drink list item two, which is flat white, equal to matcha, no, elif, drink list item two, flat white, equal to flat white. This is true. So we add six to our total, except 23. Now we can exit this block. If milk not equal to whole, oat is not equal to whole, total plus two, so 25 now, and then index plus one, that's three. And now we have finished all of our iterations, so we move on to the return statement, and we're going to return num drinks, your total is dollar sign total. And since we are printing the value of the function, we're going to print out this statement. So since that is an F string, remember, we just add in these values and num is still three, and now our total is 25. And that's all on one line. That's not two separate lines. That's all the same line. Moving on to our next example. 
So now we have a function called lunch menu and we're given a restaurant list. We have a dictionary initialized and then we have a for loop. And then at the very end, we're going to print the value of the function. So now we have lunch menu and this is our restaurant list. And so for a comma i in restaurant list, so as you can see, we have a list of tuples. And so when we do a comma i, that's tuple unpacking. So for our first iteration, a is rising roll and i is grilled cheese. If a in menu dict, which it is not, we're going to add it to menu dict. And so I'll just write menu dict down here so we can keep track of our dictionary. Okay, so rising roll. And we are going to map this value to grilled cheese. If A is equal to whistle bistro, return menu dict. Rising roll is not equal to whistle bistro, so we move on to the next iteration. If panda express in menu dict, panda express is not in the dictionary, so we're going to add it to the dictionary. A or panda express is not in the dictionary, so we move on to the else statement and add it to the dictionary. And then is Panda Express equal to Whistle Bistro? No. Moving on to the next iteration. Now this is A, this is I. Is Whistle Bistro in restaurant list or in uh, menu dict? No, it is not. And so we're going to go to the else statement and add it. And then is whistle bistro equal to whistle bistro? Yes. And so we return menu dict. And so this is our menu dictionary. And so since if we kept track of all of the keys and the values, we can just copy this right here. Once again, this is all on one line. And so one important thing, thing to note in this with this question is that we have this print statement here, but we never actually hit the print statement because as soon as A is equal to whistle bistro, we're going to return menu dict. And as soon as you hit a return, you automatically exit the function and you no longer execute the rest of the function. So for example, if we had a return right here, nothing would even print out except whatever our return is. So if we had right here, return to, then as soon as the function's called, we're gonna initialize a menu dictionary, but then we're gonna return to and ignore the rest of the function. So just keep in mind that whenever you hit the return, you automatically exit the function and stop execution. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna go over is some basic debugging. And so we're going to go through this function and see where Python would raise an error if we run ran this in idle. So we have a function called choose game, and that has two parameters, people and type. For i in range 3, 5, negative 1. So already we have an issue here 
with our range. And so the issue is that we have a start of three, a stop of five, and a step of negative one. And so there's no way to get from three to five by taking negative one steps. Because if you do three minus one or three plus negative one, you're gonna get two, then one, then zero, then negative one, and on and on. And so we're never gonna get to five. And so how we can fix that is simply by saying, just flip around the numbers. So range five comma three comma negative one. Okay, so our next, if num people equals equals two, here's another error, we have a capital I. Remember that all Python keywords must be spelled and um, written with the capitals and with lowercase letters as they're supposed to be, if that makes sense. So basically what that means is when we have an if statement, our if needs to be all lowercase. We can't have an uppercase I or else Python's not gonna recognize that as a reserved keyword. So we just have to X out that if and replace it with the lowercase I. Okay. Then total time plus equals one. Here's our next error. Total time has not been defined yet. So we're calling a variable that has not been defined in the function yet. And so Python would raise an error in that. And how we can fix that is very easily, we can initialize a variable called total time. And we would do it outside of the for loop at the top of the function. And so now anytime we call on total time, it's a variable that's already been initialized and we can add one to it or do whatever we want. And then if type is equal to board, return chess plus total time. And so again, Python is gonna raise an error that this variable does not exist and it's being called before it's being initialized. And so in this case, we don't want a variable called chess. We want to return chess as like the name of the game. And so we can easily just add quotation marks so that Python recognizes that chess, chess is supposed to be a string. And then else if the type is equal to video return COD plus total time. And so all of these total times would have raised an error, but since we initialized it, we're, we fixed all of these errors. And then else return monopoly plus total time. So those are all the errors in this function, but just remember that all of your keywords need to be exactly as they are in Python. So if you would type it in Python and it doesn't turn orange or purple or green or whatever it's supposed to turn, and it just stays black, then that means you typed in your keyword incorrectly and that could be causing an error. Remember anytime you use range or slicing that your start, stop, and step need to make sense if there's no way to get to your stop from your start with the step that you have, then Python's gonna raise an error. Make sure all of your values or all of your variables have been initialized or they have values before you call them so that you don't run into any errors. And yeah, those are the most common errors you should come across. I hope this video was helpful and happy coding.